ASMR video here on the channel. Today, by semi-popular demand, we have the return of scary Reddit stories. Now, in my first episode, we did kind of true, realistic, scary stories, like experiences. But there were quite a few comments which basically wanted me to do the more paranormal, even more scary stories. So, ask and you shall receive. I have no idea why these videos go so well with ASMR. I think the contrast of being relaxed by the whispering and then terrified by the story. I mean, I personally love them. Like, I absolutely love watching these kind of videos. So I hope you enjoy it too. Um, this, I have five stories all from the paranormal Reddit page. Now, uh, just to give like a little bit of a tease, obviously next month is October, and I think I've planned four or five like Halloween slash scary videos for like the end of October, and so you've got something to look forward to, I guess. One of those videos is going to be a one hour long video of reading stories from the No Sleep Reddit, and that's like as scary as Reddit. Reddit stories get, basically. So, that's the plan. But, I reckon today, let's jump into story number one. So, this first post is titled, My Experiences Growing Up in a Extremely Haunted Funeral Home as a Child. And this was posted by Mark and Briant994, three days ago. Hello everyone, my name is Macon, I'm 35 years old and I grew up in Kentucky. Starting when I was about 5, my parents bought a funeral home. It was well over 100 years old when they bought it. They owned and ran the funeral home and it's a pretty large funeral home in my area. We lived in the upstairs of the funeral home. They still own and operate it to this day, and I visit pretty regularly, and occasionally have experiences. I had a very interesting childhood growing up. This is going to be a long read. We're ready, Megan. As a child, I had many experiences every day all the way up until I moved out at 19. Some were terrifying and some were comforting. We had many resident spirits that just stayed around. Some were human, and some definitely were not human. Each had its own personality and temperament. I still have experiences to this day when I go to visit my parents. The first experience I remember was when I was about six years old. I was sitting on the couch in one of the viewing rooms, and I got the feeling of being watched. I looked up and, I, and saw a woman standing in the corner of the room. She was a young woman in her mid-twenties. She was wearing a black dress. She was very pale. She had long red hair. She smiled and waved at me, then said, Hello, little girl. I said hello back, and she smiled again and disappeared. She would become known as Alice. She was the most extroverted and nicest of the resident spirits in the funeral home. She was very talkative. I formed a good relationship with her. She pretty much became like a second mother to me. What? She was the matriarch spirit in the funeral home. Here's a summary of my experiences with her. I would see her almost every day standing in the corners or in the middle of the room. She was always smiling and she would always say hello. When I would get off the bus from school, she would always be standing there. When I would walk in the door to greet me, she would smile and say hello. Then she would ask how my day was. I'd say hello and tell her about my day. Then she would disappear. One time in high school, I snuck out to go to a party and she appeared to my mother in her bedroom and told on me. <laughs> my mother was waiting in the up for me in the kitchen, waiting up for me in the kitchen when I returned. <laughs> wow, this ghost is a snitch. I should add, these aren't like fabricated stories, allegedly. Rather than being like fictitious and whatnot, 
these are like people's actual paranormal experiences. The video I sort of teased earlier, that'll be like the more well-constructed, well-written stories to, you know, make sure you don't get any sleep, basically. And a fourth point about Alice is she protected me from one of the dark and non-human spirits that hung out in the embalming room. The first time I wandered into the embalming room right after we moved in, I saw a spirit that definitely didn't seem human. It looked like a young girl that was wearing a grey t-shirt and black pants. Its skin was like scales and it was very reptilian looking. It had a forked tongue like a snake and red eyes. The first time I saw it, I had wandered into the embalming room. For the first time, I was just exploring right after we moved in. I heard a loud growl and looked up and it was just standing there staring at me. I was paralysed with fear. Then Alice appeared. It looked at her and kind of leaned its head to the side like a dog that's curious about something. She told it to leave me alone and it growled at me. It took a step towards me. Alice then stepped in front of me and this reptilian thing then looked absolutely terrified. Alice struck her arm out and this thing started to levitate and was choking. It looked like the Darth Vader choke. Alice then moved her arm to the side and it flew into the wall and disappeared. After that Alice turned around, got on her knees in front of me and told me to be more careful than disappeared. <laughs> I'm not convinced by this account, but, you know, don't want to be too sceptical. I don't know if Alice is human, but I'm sure you guys can tell me what you think. She is seemingly very powerful. Now to give a summary of my experiences with the reptilian spirit. The experience with Alice protecting me. One time I saw it in one of the hallways and it climbed up the wall onto the ceiling and just stared at me and growled, then disappeared. I saw it every time I walked in or passed the embalming room. It would just stand there and stare. It never tried to attack me, I think, because Alice scared it to death. Now to talk about the spirit we called the Grey Man. We would see him in the chapel. He was tall and he was wearing a grey suit and black tie. Most of the time he just stood there. Sometimes he would wave. He was an older man, he never really bothered anybody, and typically kept himself to himself. He was quite protective over the organ in the chapel, maybe that's what he was attached to. There was a spirit of a little girl that hung out in the living room. The way this girl has written it, it's like it's, she's playing bloody sims, like putting ghosts everywhere. She wore a pink dress and had long blonde hair. Most of the time you would hear laughing, then she would appear in front of you, run away and disappear. That's a big no from me. Then there was the spirit we called the General. He was a young man that wore what looked like a military dress uniform from possibly the Civil War. He never really said anything to us, but was always polite and would dip his hat when we would see him. This is a load of rubbish, I'm sorry. Well, I shouldn't say that because that's a bit disrespectful, isn't it? I just, I'm coming from the point of view of a crazy sceptic because I've never experienced, well, I have had some experiences, but nothing like too crazy, but we're not going to talk about my experience because realistically it's not that, not that interesting. There was a elderly couple that we would sometimes see standing side by side. They were dressed in Victorian style clothes. That's just some of the experiences that my family and I have had. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and feel free to message me. Uh, I want to I see what anyone thinks like Alice is. Yeah, they reckon she's a guardian spirit. Okay. And people like me being a bit sceptic saying real or not, well this guy says real or not is a good read which it wants to be there. If it's not real, very imaginative to come up with all those different different ghosts. But uh, yeah, that was account number one. Let's move on to the next one, which is titled Haunted House in Bellingham. I'm not a big believer in ghosts, but I've had two experiences that have kind of shifted my perspective. 
perspective. One of them was when I lived in Bellingham. My wife and I moved into a house at the end of Virginia Street back in 2016. The house was in decent condition but certainly older. We had a daughter who was about five or six at the time and a newborn. After moving in, we noticed a few strange things happening. We never felt threatened by whatever was in that house. After moving in, my wife wanted to finally get cable TV. Having worked with Comcast before, I have always been seeing cable as a bit of a waste of money. But she wanted it, so we got it. A day or two later, I was asleep and having a dream that the TV was really loud in the other room. My wife woke me up and said someone was in the house and they had turned on the TV. So it wasn't a dream. I told her to stay in the room with the baby and, and the phone to call the police if she heard a commotion, and I got my pistol. I carefully moved towards the living room. It was hard to hear if anyone was moving around because the TV was loud, pretty much full volume. But I tried to pay attention anyway because I knew I needed to have a positive identification before raising the pistol and the house was dark. Waving a gun at shadows is how innocent people get shot. I got to the living room and didn't find anything, so I kept moving. I didn't turn on the TV, because I figured the loud noise would also mask the sound of any movements. Since it was my house, I figured I had the home court advantage against an intruder. I was very lucid, given that I had just been dead asleep. But adrenaline is like that. I ultimately cleared the entire house and didn't find a thing. The TV had apparently come on by itself. Stuff happens, I figured, as I turned off the TV and stood in complete silence. Wires get crossed. The old man across the street may have turned on his TV and the same remote frequency may have activated our TV. Who knows? I secured my pistol and tried to go back to sleep. A few days later, I picked my daughter up at school. Dad, I have to tell you something. Great, I thought. My daughter got put in time out again at school for being disruptive. She's always been a bit of a lovable blabbermouth. What happened? Last night, my TV came on by itself. I might have normally brushed this off with the same crossed wires, TV, remote logic, gymnastics, but my daughter's TV was only connected to a PS3, which we used so she could watch Netflix. It takes two separate remotes to turn anything on. Now things were creepy. Yeah, that gave me chills a little bit, can't lie. Because my security contracting job had me work all over at different times of day, my wife and I would frequently sleep in different rooms so I didn't wake her up when I went to work. After I went to bed one night, I heard running up and down the hallway, just quick little footsteps running past my door. I got up and opened the door to tell my daughter to stop running. Simultaneously, my wife opened her bedroom door opposite mine across the hallway to tell our daughter the same thing. Are you making all that noise? No, I said. I thought it was Isa. But I could see into our daughter's room and see her asleep in bed. She's asleep, and she was. Not in that way kids pretend to be asleep so they don't get yelled at to go to bed. This was the sleep withdrawal coming out of her mouth and hair covering her face. Completely out for the count. My wife and I didn't talk about the footstep that we had both heard running down the hallway. Yeah, that's a big no from me. A few days later, I was in bed again, in the spare bedroom, almost asleep. I heard the terrible noise of what could only be the unmistakable sound of the plastic sippy cup falling onto the linoleum in the kitchen and bouncing around what seemed like an eternity. I've got it this time, I thought, tossing the blankets off 
so I could go tell our daughter to go back to bed. I grumpily walked to the kitchen and flicked on the light. Nothing. No cup. No explanation for the sound. My wife followed. What was that noise? Nothing, I said. I didn't need to freak her out. We had both become more aware of a presence in that house. Not evil, just annoying. Like they were starting to let us know our time as their guest houses. House guests, guest house, house guests had come to an end and it was time to leave. A little while later, my wife and I were sitting on the couch. As we watched TV, we heard this slow squeaking sound. We looked around to see where it was coming from. It took a second for us to notice it was the door to the linen closet in the hallway being opened because it was opening so slowly. The door had a mirror on the inside and we slowly watched as the door opened until we sat there staring at our own reflection. We just sat there, silent trying to find one impossible explanation for why our house couldn't actually be haunted. Very shortly afterward, I got a new position and we were scheduled to move across the country. We had a garage sale and sold whatever items we could to reduce the amount of junk we would otherwise have to pack or throw away. A few neighbours picked through our stuff and I eventually got into a conversation with an older gentleman about why we were moving. I remember when this house first got here a few years ago, he said unsolicited. The house was in good condition but old. Old cabinets and fixtures. A pink toilet and bathtub. Something from the late 70s or early 80s. Something an old lady like my grandma would live in. Sir, I said, correcting him, this house certainly wasn't only built only a few years ago. No, that's when it first arrived here. This old house was brought in from somewhere else and put on this lot. If he had told me some old lady had died in that house, I'm sure I would have lost my mind. I certainly wasn't going to ask. How do you move an entire house? But, yeah, I think it said it in this story. Not evil, just annoying. Like, why are these ghosts getting out of it? Like, just leave me alone, is what I would be thinking. <laughs> like, seriously. But, uh, no, that was definitely a lot scarier. Got chills at a few. A few. A few moments, but, uh, yeah. Let's keep it moving. This next one is called Don't Disturb the Dead, which, to be honest, is just generally pretty good advice, to be honest, isn't it? About 15 years ago, my parents and I moved to a new city. We settled on buying an old house built around the 1940s and lived there for about three to four years. An old woman lived there, eventually got a dog, and they lived there until they both passed. I've already shared my first experience with the unknown and previously mentioned my dad was a die-hard skeptic of everything related to the supernatural and paranormal. My dad lost a lot of this skepticism because of this house, but still refuses to believe in the supernatural and paranormal. The statement, I don't have all the answers but that doesn't mean ghosts and spirits are real, is his favourite defence. The house needed a lot of renovation, cleaning and love. The kitchen had a small laundry room built into the wall next to where the fridge went. There was also some unused space past the back wall in the laundry room. So, we tore it all out to make use of that space and turned it into an 8 by 6 feet pantry. The house felt a little weird to me after the renovations were done but nothing happened or came of it. I've talked to my mum about it since then. She thinks our changes to the house altered the flow of energy throughout the house and caused temporary bottlenecks in the flow. The walk-in closet in the master bedroom had two full-length frameless mirrors. 
is mounted to the wall via plastic holding brackets and screws. My dad had the bright idea of wanting to mount one of those mirrors on my closet door. He pulled a mirror and left it leaning against my closet door. I hated the feeling that mirror gave off to the point I had to rationalise away the impulse to break the mirror. Injuries be damned. I thought I had shut down his suggestion by saying I didn't want the mirror at all, but he thought he knew better. A bit later, I heard the sound of his drill coming from my room. Lo and behold, the mirror was being mounted to my closet door against my wishes. This mirror gave off a nasty feeling frequently. It most often felt like I was either being watched or that something was flat out wrong. I would open and enter my closet to get a change of clothes and once in a while I'd feel like I had somehow ended a portal, if you will. I've no proof, but I suspect I felt the boundary of a space that overlapped with my closet. None of this started happening until after that mirror was mounted to my closet door. I came to occasionally regret that I didn't break that mirror, but then I wouldn't have been able to sometimes observe certain other things. We moved in around spring. When summer came, we started digging up parts of the backyard to plant seeds and store-bought plants. My mum was digging along the fence line because she wanted the grapevines to interweave with the chain-link fence. She disturbed some bones by accident at one end of the fence. In our area, some people will bury cow bones and the like, believing it helps leach calcium and stuff into the soil. My mum started pulling out the bones and about at a conniption. Is that a word? When she dug up the skull of a dog, we quickly reburied the dog's bones and believe to this day we accidentally uncovered the bones of the previous owner's dog. It wasn't even a week after that when the house turned weird. I frequently saw things move out of the corner of my eye at all times of the day throughout the house, but I saw it the most in my room. I've seen their moving reflection in the mirror on my closet door. Once I was laying down to relax before bed and had my foot hanging off the edge of my bed. Through the mirror I saw something orange streak past at the same time I felt something furry brush my foot. Last, I frequently had all sorts of dreams, most would call nightmares, on the nights these entities were highly active. Context, I've been told it's because I'm a heavy sleeper but I rarely dream at all, so any kind of dream is preferable to no dreams. My mum and I would be talking in her bedroom when we'd hear scratching noises start coming from the closet. At first we thought it was a mouse or something chewing on stuff and pulled out all of the boxes. But there was no damage to the floors, baseboards, boxes or anything else. Mum would sometimes open the closet to get something and find the boxes had been rearranged. Other times we'd be back there talking about various things and we'd hear something heavy hit the floor in the closet. Context, my mum has her own bedroom because my dad is one of those violent toss and turn types of sleepers. She stopped sleeping in the same bed as him because she got tired of waking up multiple times a night from being hit and kicked. <laughs> However, the coup de gras coup de grace, came in the form of an event I never experienced myself but heard a lot about during the first week all of this started happening. My dad took the master bedroom for himself. He'd gone to bed and was about to fall asleep when he felt the bed shifting back and forth. This rocked him enough to wake him up. He said our cat Mia looked over him and immediately dove under the bed. He described the bed moving as if something was getting into bed with him. He told my mum about it the next morning. She didn't believe him since he's always been such a hard sceptic and slept in the bed with him the following few nights. A few nights later she got to experience the feeling of the bed moving around as if something was crawling in between them. We 
suspect it was the spirit of the previous owner's dog. These things continued off and on for the rest of the time we lived there. I don't know if the activity kept up after we moved out, but I hope not. Sure, the events were mild, but those sort of things can still prey a person's nerves. So the moral of my experiences in that house is, don't ever disturb the dead. Yeah, that's pretty scary. I mean, this top comment says perhaps the dog is searching for its rightful owner. Maybe it cannot be at peace until it finds them. That's kind of sad. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that stuff hasn't happened to me, to be fair. I'll finish this video with telling you all about my paranormal experience. It's not really on the level of this, but... Um, yeah, I'll... If you watch to the end, there's a little incentive. Um, I think this video is going to be quite long, so I think rather than doing five, I'll do four, and then I'll share mine at the end. So we'll get rid of, to be honest, the fifth one. All it's going to do is pretty rubbish anyway, so we'll replace it with mine. Um, so this has got 1,100 upvotes in just a day. And it's titled, As a Correctional Officer, I've had tons of experiences. I've worked as a correctional officer for a long time. I've worked at facilities in Texas and in Michigan. The oldest prison I've ever worked at just recently started to close in Michigan, and it got me thinking about all the paranormal experiences I've had there, and in the other prisons I'd worked at. I'd like to share with you all some of the more notable paranormal experiences that I've had while working in these prisons. Yeah, to be fair, like, if you're gonna get a lot of paranormal activity, I'd say prisons are up there with, you're gonna get a lot of stuff. First off, I'd like to say that I never really believed in ghosts before I started working as a correctional officer. I started off working in Texas at an intake facility. I worked night shifts 12 hours from 6pm to 6am. The first experience I ever had was working on a lower security housing unit. When finishing a round, I was chatting with my partner and heard a loud banging sound. It was around 3am at this point. No prisoners should be out of their bunks. I asked my partner if they knew what the banging was. They, being an older officer, told me bluntly that the unit we were working was haunted. They told me the sound was coming from a door of one of the small quiet cells in a hallway not directly visible from the officer's station and about how a prisoner had died in one. The Bridget prisoner allegedly died because the officers working there at the time had given them a sack of food when it was lunchtime for prisoners, and the prisoners had choked on the food and died. I didn't really believe the unit was haunted, so I decided to go look at this door. The sound volume increased as I got closer to the door. The door itself was visibly shaking, as if someone was pounding on it. There was nothing that could have been causing the door to shake like it was. I was at a loss for words. Later that night, I checked the door again, and there was a steamed-up handprint visible on the glass of the door's window. Another experience I had was at the same facility, but at a different housing unit. It was around 1 to 2 a.m., and I was sitting inside the officer's station, watching the cameras and talking to my partner. I look at one of the cameras and clearly see a prisoner sitting at a table in the day room. I turn my head to look at the day room and no one is sitting at the table I just saw on camera. I ask my partner to go check it out because no one is supposed to be out of bed yet. I roll back the time on the camera to see if I could see where the prisoner might have gone. The prisoner on the camera literally slowly fades away and vanishes completely. My partner comes back into the officer's station and we 
both watch this video over and over. Later on that same night during one of my rounds, I notice a wet floor sign that got left out. I return it to the border closet. I get back to the officer's station and look back to where the border closet is and see the same wet floor sign left out. I ask my partner if they're playing a joke on me or something because I just put the sign away, but my partner denies doing anything with it. I go back out and make sure I put the sign back in the closet and lock the door. Get back to the opposite station. Wet floor sign right there in the open again. My partner and I are both are watching this wet floor sign now. It starts to dip over on one end very slowly, two of its legs off the ground. The sign then slams to the ground. It then proceeded to slide quickly up the hallway and then back to in front of the closet door before seizing all movement. My partner and I refused to come out of the officer station for the rest of the night because we were scared shitless, as you would be. Although again, I'd say these guys aren't really doing anything, they're just being annoying. Like, go away. One more notable one from Texas. I was working in an ADSEG unit, really high security unit for prisoners that get in fights and cause a lot of problems repeatedly. We had a prisoner who was sitting in one of our close observation cells. These cells are usually used for people who threaten harming themselves. In the summertime, prisoners will sometimes just say they are suicidal to be put in one of these cells because they are a lot cooler and the near AC vents that the normal housing units don't have. The prisoner told me that this was what they were doing and that they didn't want to cause any problems. Later on that night, one of my partners and I were watching cameras and all of a sudden we see a shadow moving across the floor. Eventually it comes to the close observation cell and disappears under the door. This is where it gets a little crazy. I do a round check and check on the close observation cell. The prisoner is pacing in the cell. I ask them if they're okay and the prisoner tells me that something doesn't feel right and that they are hearing voices that aren't there. I try to calm them down and eventually they do and lay on the bed. Later on, my partner calls for assistance because the prisoner had bit in the skin of their own wrists, causing them to bleed. They held them above their head and allegedly was speaking in tongues. Oh gosh, that, yeah, that one's horrible. Wow. When I started working at prison in Michigan, I worked at a prison that's now closing. It was built back in 1877 and is one of the oldest prisons still operating in all of the United States. There were so many small experiences that I've had here. Doors would slam, you'd hear voices, cold chills. The first really not notable experience I had was around Christmas time on third shift. I was working the oldest unit on the facility. Usually we don't have prisoners there, but we had opened the unit to separate prisoners during the COVID pandemic. I didn't have a partner due to how short-staffed we were, so one of the other officers set up a DV for me to keep me entertained because I'd be really far away from all the other units and get bored with no one to talk to. I do rounds for most of the night, watching DV in between them. I suddenly hear a banging noise from a door that leads to a hallway that takes you all the way to an even older, unused, condemned part of the prison. I open the door and take a look down the hallway. A cold breeze hits me and suddenly my arm hairs stand on end. I close the door, thoroughly creeped out. I go and sit down and start watching TV again. The TV starts flipping through channels rapidly and then stops on static. 
I have to get moved to a different unit because I'm so scared. <laughs> One day on third shift, my work friend and I were working positions that allowed us to have a lot of free time and no prisoners to watch. We decided to explore the prison. We explored the tunnels that went underneath the prison, the old barns, the old unstaffed gun tower. We eventually decided to go look at the old condemned part of the prison from my earlier experience. There was a big metal gate that was about halfway down the hallway that had to be opened by a big skeleton key. We get back to the old condemned part and my friend tells me about how this part was supposed to be the old segregation. We had to use flashlights to see because this section is so old it's not powered. The energy back here, there I won't ever forget. Just being there filled me with a feeling of dread. I asked my friend to head back and we start to head back down to where the hallway to the gate was. My friend's flashlight suddenly dies. We make it to the hallway barely able to see anything in the almost pitch blackness. We hear something start to run after us, so we start running up the hallway too. My friend fumbles with the key as we hear it getting closer. We get the gate open and sprint out of there. Later on, I noticed that my friend had red claw marks all over his arms. And that is that. That is the end of that. Some very scary experiences. Like I said, they're not as scary as like the stories because they're not picked up with like a big climax or whatever. But some of the things we read definitely very chilling. We'll end the video with me telling you my little experience. It's really not that big a thing, but basically. I've lived in this house my whole life, and out there, um, if you walk along, you come to my kitchen, and basically you have my, so my kitchen is like here, and the living room is here, and there's like a wall in between, and like you have to like walk around, say this is the wall, kitchen, uh, living room here, and you go round, just walk through to go into the living room. But in this wall, there's a hatch, so you can see into the living room from the kitchen. You can see into the kitchen from the living room. What has happened to me multiple times is I'll be in the kitchen doing something, and a figure will walk past, like shift past, is the best way to describe it, past the hatch. Now, this has happened to me quite a lot of times, and you might be thinking... Oh, it's just like your glasses, like the reflection of the light, blah, blah, blah. No, it's happened to me when I haven't had my glasses on. And it's literally like a full-on thing walking past. And I'm just like, when it happens, I'm like, oh, it's just a sibling or my mum, my dad walking past. But nothing ever comes around. It just goes past the hatch and that's it. And then, like, I've been, I've been home alone and it's happened, like, clear as day as well. It's not like a, a noticeable like person or anything, but it's just like a dark, I'd say it's just like a dark outline shifting past the hatch. And then you go around to look, obviously, there's nothing there. But anyway, so that happened to me, and basically I, we, I was at dinner, we were having dinner one night, and I just thought I'd like share it with them, and my mum's like, oh, whatever, but... My dad was like, not even joking, like, I've had that too, but obviously just didn't want to say anything because didn't want to scare the girls, like, I've got two young sisters. So, yeah, so he's had it happen to him too, so, what it is, I don't know, to be honest, I don't really care. Do I believe in ghosts? Do I believe half the stuff I've read today? Probably not. Do I want anything to happen to me to prove that ghosts are real? Definitely not. I'm happy to be a skeptic and be in the dark. Don't really want to experience stuff for myself, but if you guys have any interesting paranormal experiences or whatever, do let me know down in the comments. I'm uh, I'm very interested to to hear. But yeah.
video thank you so much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe